Hello and welcome to today's webinar entitled Learn How to Extend Your ISO 14001 EMS into an Energy Management System under ISO 50001. This webinar is brought to you courtesy of Eneris and UL DQS. My name is Leonie Tanzi, I'm the Marketing Manager here at Eneris and I will act as the moderator for today's session. I would ask our panellists just to mute their microphones just for a second and um, perhaps unmute themselves when we're just ready to start. Um, we'll briefly just discuss a couple of housekeeping issues. Um, I would ask you to remember that your audio can be affected by bandwidth quality and internet traffic. If you're having any difficulty hearing us, please select the telephone option in the audio panel and dial in using the telephone number which can be accessed in your GoToWebinar confirmation email. Both presenters today um, will be delighted to hear your feedback um, and any questions that you may have. Um, we do have a couple of hundred people registered for the webinar today, so um, unfortunately we won't be able to open the mics, but I would ask you to um, enter all the questions you have into the, this questions panel here. We will try to address as many of them as we, we, we can within the hour. Um, and we will follow up with any questions we don't manage to get to um, as soon as possible after the webinar. We will run a couple of polls today during the session. Um, the purpose of, the, of these polls is to really drive engagement and to help our panellists tailor their advice to best meet your needs. Um, a survey will also pop up um, at the end of the webinar today. Um, all attendees who complete the survey will be entered into a competition to win a one-month free subscription to the Eneris ISO 50001 Manager Pro software. Um, we would be delighted to get a conversation going on social media, on Twitter and on LinkedIn in relation to today's topic. As you can see, we've created um, a hashtag, um, so hashtag extend14001 um, on Twitter and we've also created a, a LinkedIn group, Eneris Extend ISO14001 webinar. Um, so you're more than welcome to jump on there and let us know your comments and your opinions. We'd be absolutely delighted to hear from you. Um, now I'd like to introduce our two speakers for today. Um, Representing Eneris, we have Dr. Mike Brogan, who's our Chief Operating Officer here and one of Eneris' original founders. Representing ULDQS, we're delighted to have Don MacDonald on board. Don is ULDQS's Sustainability and Energy Program Director. Um, so I um, might ask you guys just to open your mics and say a quick hello, um, and uh, then Mike will take us through the agenda. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our webinar. That uh, Mike Brogan here. Hello everyone, this is Don McDonald and we look forward to uh, getting good questions and uh, good engagement. Thank you very much for your time today. Okay, um, thanks Leone, thanks Don. Um, I'm going to uh, do uh, most of the presentation today and, and Don will, um, will, will interject at, at points during it as well to provide his um, his um, experience and, and, and knowledge of the subject as well. Um, just a quick overview of the content of the webinar today. Just a little bit about ULDQS, a bit about Eneris, a little bit on the history of, 50, of ISO 50001, um, why ISO 50001, what is ISO 50001 Energy Management System, uh, why extend it to 50001, a short, very short demonstration of, uh, of, of, of our product, uh, you know, showing it as an integrated system, and then talking about some practical steps for integration and follow up with questions and answers. Okay, so if Don, you just want to introduce ULDQS. Certainly, thank you, Mike. ULDQS is comprised of oh, just a little under 2,500 auditors globally around 80 offices in 60 countries, uh, and we've got a little over uh, 50,000 certified sites uh, across all of these uh, locations. And uh, we uh, have a number of folks that uh, today may have multinationals, uh, and these offices have a, a number of different standards uh, by which uh, we offer our services. So thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Tom. Um, just a small bit about Eneris. Um, just a quick statement, you know, uh, our, our mission is to enable organizations to implement best practice ways of working resulting in continual improvement. So there's probably a, a lofty statement, but that is, that is our, our, our aim uh, in terms of providing, um, you know, software and solutions to, to our customers to help them achieve these goals. Um, just some customers um, won't go on about these, but just a mixture of industry, 
uh, commercial um, building customers um, for our products. Um, just to say that we've been doing it for a while. We've been doing um, ISO, you know, ISO 9000 software for, for 19 years. Um, my, myself personally was involved in the QSET um, company back in 1995. Uh, I was one of the founders of Energe in 2004, and from there we've been building our our experience and building our our, our tools and solutions um, since since then, right through to the the present day with the um, the launch of the. Uh, the Enera size of 5001 product which coincided with the launch of the release of the standard in 2011. And since then, you know, the standard has growing and, and it's continuing to grow rapidly. Um, we're now at six and a half, over 6,500 certifications worldwide. You can see it's kind of a, you know, it's, it's, it's not a full exponential curve, but it is rising rapidly. Now a lot of the, um, the certifications are happening in Germany, where there where there where there is um, you know just incent additional incentives there, but we hope that the rest of the world will, will catch on, and we expect this standard to um, have the same um, you know um, in rate of certifications as ISO 9000 um, that that that, it, that was achieved in the in the early 90s and right through to, to the present day, which we expect would be around 220 to 220,000 certifications in the next 10 years. Why uh, an ISO 5001 energy management system? Well, we would say the evidence is, is speaking for itself now. We've some just some um, feedback here from uh, universities in in the UK, which are saving annually 100,000 pounds, 11% um, of the, of, it, of its energy consumption. Deloitte um, independent research has shown that organisations that pursue a systematic energy management approach are achieving three times more savings than those that do not. And that's uh, independent research. Pfizer, um, you know, a, a case study that we have have shown that you know, 50,001 has saved five percent of extra costs and also saving time and you know, administration of the management of the energy management system. And um, the certification bodies, as Certification Europe, say that their experience is that savings are in the range of six to thirty-seven percent. If we talk about the um, the superior energy performance um, program, that's that, that, that is run by the Department of Energy in the US. Um, the results of that to date have shown that this, the SEP program delivers 10.1% additional savings over business as usual. So that's that, that diagram there. And, um, and that's a significant achievement. It just shows that you know, people are making savings you go, with business as usual, but significantly more savings can be made by putting in a systematic approach based on, on, on an ISO 50001 approach. The, um, the top four superior energy performance um, performers are, um, are listed there, Volvo, Dow, Harbeck, 3M, and you can see the range of savings that they've achieved over three years, you know, from 15% from to 25%. And just highlighting Harbeck is one of, one of our customers, such as is, is a platinum, um, a platinum SEP uh, a, a, a client and um, they've achieved 16.5% saving savings so far. Don, if you want to speak about this, um, these next couple of, of slides. Sure. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you know, just to follow up uh, the, the the particular SCP results in the following slide, uh, you should keep in mind that the United States SCP, its foundational requirement is becoming certified to ISO 50001. So that is the behavioral management piece uh, that is, is the foundation to each one of those programs. Um, with respect to continual improvement, um, there's a ladder that organizations need to consider. Uh, many organizations today have a typical project-by-project project focus, loosely organized. Uh, typically, we're looking at return on investment. Uh, we may or may not commission the projects correctly, and as a result, um, we tend to forget about them, we walk away, and then we leave them up to facilities maintenance or the engineering group to uh, operate them for the rest of their uh, you know, operational lifetime. Well, we run into issues with that uh, because of lack of maintenance budgets, because of lack of attention, they're forgotten, and the efficiencies that we think we, we installed into these various processes such as compressors, boilers, HVAC, they go away. So we have continual improvement programs, ISO 50001, and superior energy performance, each one having a little more difficult, a little more challenging uh, step in analysis 
uh, adding both behavioral and the project focus uh, together. Some of the maturity uh, results that we're seeing uh, globally, uh, if you want to look at it from a best-in-class, uh, less-than-class uh, kind of a structure, uh, would be minus 6% reduction in energy costs for the top 20. Uh, that's recently been updated to 7% on average. And then we also have the, uh, the laggards uh, that are in the plus 18%. Organizations that kind of fall into this bucket as an example, tend to be organizations that think of uh, just being in compliance. Uh, so those are some of the ranges that we're actively seeing in the marketplace and in all of the results. Okay, thanks, Tom. And um, I, I suppose you've been just okay. Okay, and thanks, Tom. You've just introduced, I suppose, the um, you know the, the concept of maturity as well, and and this is something that we like to get across as well as you know that that people have to start somewhere and you know it's it's about starting at a certain point and then maturing over time you know in a continual improvement process um, just to talk a bit about the ISO 5001 way of working you know what what we say is ISO 5001 is not a project based approach okay this is um this is a diagram that that's been around for a long time and it basically just describes you know where companies see costs rising our organizations see costs rising they carry out miscellaneous actions to, to reduce those costs, but really they're, they're just miscellaneous actions. There's no systematic approach. The costs start rising again, and we get this, this seesaw effect, this um, cyclical effect, um, where this just repeated time and time again. Okay, and what we say is, you know, you've, you've limited control of energy costs and actions. You, you cannot predict, you know, your, your, your budgets for your energy uh, going forward, and you don't know what actions are being effective or, or not. ISO 5001 approach is a best practice way of working, and it's, it's, it really is becoming recognized as that throughout the world with, with the number of certifications and with the uh, savings that are being achieved. Um, and and in, in, this, in this approach, what you have is the, the rising costs of energy. There's a commitment to energy management um, in, in the organization. The costs start to reduce because of this commitment. Um, and, and this may be through even just simple energy saving actions, uh, you know, at, at a first level. And then as, as these savings are achieved and more, you know, funding becomes available, people recognize that this is, this is a good way of working. More investments can be put into, um, you know, investing in equipment and, and looking at um, returns on investment. And further savings can be achieved again and, and, and so forth as it goes over the years. So you start to keep, drive down costs and keep costs down by continually in investing and reinvesting. And this is just uh, the last picture that overlaps here is an example from a, a large pharmaceutical company that um, did a presentation um, last year and, and it shows a very similar structure where their, you know, their, their, their costs have driven down their costs year on year by you know, displaying this type of, of um, approach and, 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 and maturity to energy management. You know the um, and and we can share with you the the slides and the examples that are that are as part of the different and um, the years like where they started with uh, simple actions in 2009 to starting to look at bottom up and then right through to 2013 where they started looking at investing in um, in return in, in renewable energies and 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 more advanced um, more advanced systems. Just contrasting the two different approaches, you know, if you take project-based business as usual approach compared to ISO 50001, some of the characteristics may be it's a project by project approach compared to, a, you know, an, an all-encompassing energy strategy with a systematic approach throughout the organization. Uh, no consistent methodology, you know, you've got a consistent methodology through the 50001 framework, you know, m probably often reactive to price increases, whereas 50001 is, is a proactive approach. You know, limited engagement maybe with um, with the entire organization. Maybe it's just a limited number of people involved in, in energy management. Whereas 50,001 it promotes uh, engagement of all the energy actors, and the results may vary. You know, for business as usual approaches, where sometimes even even costs can increase because of of uh, I suppose of taking your eye off the um, the, the the energy management. Whereas 50,001, as we as we've talked about already, has proven to generate up to 10 you know, percent higher results than project-based approaches. Just to move on to talk about the, um, 
the ISO 50001 structure itself. I mean, a lot of people, I think, on on the webinar today will be, you know, are, are coming from a a 14,000 and and also have, you know, understand 50001. So I won't labour this this point too much. But it's a plan, do, check, act approach. Um, I've put this analogy here, which you know maybe it's it's a bad analogy, but it's 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 based on my car, where the energy policy is like the um, the chassis and the driver. And you have to have a commitment by the top management to, to, for implementation of, of the 50001. You need to be able to demonstrate and, and commit to demonstrating continued improvement. You need to commit to setting objectives and targets and complying with regulations. And you need to commit to reviewing the, uh, the, uh, the energy management system regularly. The energy planning aspect, you know, is where I, I describe it as a fuel. You know, you, you, need, to, you need something to, to drive it and you need to understand your, where you're coming from. You need to analyze your energy sources and uses. You need to identify you know, significant energy uses and, and other energy uses. Establish baselines and, and energy performance indicators and review the laws and set objectives and then create action plans and, and follow through on those action plans. The implementation operation then is, is, is what, I, what I describe as the engine. You know, it's really where things get achieved. You know, the, the staff are, are competent and are trained in energy management, they're aware of what's going on in terms of the energy management system. They are involved in effective operation and control, especially around um, significant energy uses. Uh, they're involved in the design, in, in new design, where energy energy is included in the design of new equipment and process. Um, there's full communication to all to all in the organisation of, of the energy management program and, and its achievements and, and activities. Um, procurement is energy efficiency is also built into procurement and also just, just good document control and record keeping so that people know what they're doing and know how to to go about their go about their function. The checking aspect is is, is what I call the dashboard. You know where you're doing the monitoring uh, of the system. You know you're you're monitoring your significant energy uses, you're monitoring energy sources, and your EMPIs. You're carrying out internal audits. You're checking. You know, are, are you doing what you what you should be doing? And are you carrying out corrective actions? Um, and and are you making sure that your records are, are under control? And then the management review aspect is is the the checkup service. You know, the annual checkup or or whatever the six month checkup of your of your of your car. You know, you want to review and fix um, any issues with, around energy policy or or energy performance. You know, have you have you achieved the energy performance that you expect to achieve? You know. Are your AMPIs, the, the right AMPIs, do they help you to achieve that energy performance that you want to achieve? And, um, and then also reviewing audit results and fixing any, any issues around the energy management system itself and, and review and fix objectives and targets. So that's just a, um, a quick overview of the, uh, the ISO 5001 structure. Okay, um, just moving on then to uh, a, a, a quick poll from Leone. Hi, Mike. Are you yeah, okay with that? I'm yeah. I'm ready to go. So let me just pop that poll up on everybody's screen. Um, so hopefully you're all seeing this now. What is the biggest driver for ISO fifty thousand and one certification within your organisation, or I guess if you're a consultant, your clients' organisations? So if you can all, um, you know, just let us know your opinions. It would be great to create a little bit of an engagement. Um, we'll keep that poll alive there for a couple of seconds. So do you feel it's to reduce energy costs, to gain the reputational benefits, to reduce greenhouse gases, to benefit from regional tax rebates, or maybe it's something else that uh, we haven't included there. So I'd ask you please to, um, to vote, and we'll keep that poll up for another five seconds or so. So we'll give it five four, three, two, one. So let me just close that poll now and share with you the results. So perhaps we could get Don um, to um, take the first comment on those results. Don, hopefully you're seeing them on your screen. Sure, thank you, Leonie. Yeah, we, we, we definitely see the focus is on, on saving money. But what's interesting about this is, is that different organizations, what do they do with the money that they save? Very few organizations right now take the saved capital or the saved uh, operating costs and put them back into work uh, on other additional uh, energy efficiency or energy related projects. It, 
usually uh, your finding organizations put these funds directly back into the general operating fund. Uh, so that's something we're seeing as a little bit of a uh, action. Actually, you know, the, the reputational benefits side of this, we do see that that, uh, that is important. Um, having third-party verification uh, for some organizations, especially within the supply chain uh, of very large sectors, is, is very important. And then obviously the link to greenhouse gas is becoming uh, more important each day. I, I would venture to guess in the next several years, you may see that one come up at almost equal the energy costs. Super, super. Thanks for that, Don. So we might just uh, go back to you, Mike, and let you continue on with your slides. So let me just take that poll down. And if you unmute yourself, Mike, and then we'll let you get ready to go. Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you, Leonie. Thanks, Don. Thanks for those comments and, and, and an interesting poll. So let me just move on then to the... Um, so just the next um, section, which is which is the title of our of our webinar today: Why extend ISO 14,000 to ISO 50,001? And I've now put the extend into um, I suppose just into into quotation marks because um, it has actually I, I put this topic up on a number of LinkedIn groups during um, last weekend, and it, and it has raised quite a bit of you know a bit of discussion, which which is brilliant. You know there is a lot of um, interest in 50,001 out there. There's a lot of interest in from 14,001 people, you know, and, and how do we make the most of the existing 14,001 system to, to extend it into uh, our, our two, two and integrate it with the 50,001. So maybe extend was not the, the right choice of words, but the, what, what we're discussing here is, is how do we, you know, how do we piggyback our, our, our use 14,000 as, as a foundation for, for a 50,001 implementation. Just, just a couple of, of points here, you know, is um, the focus of 50,001 is on significant energy savings, and I think that ties in with our poll as well, that people's focus is on, on, uh, on energy savings. Um, 14,000 does focuses on environmental impacts and of, of energy and the risk avoidance and not so much on costs, okay. So 14,001 is important for organizations, you know, because it is helping to uh, avoid and, and, and comply with environmental legislation and to avoid any, any risks with, with non-compliance. 50,001 can focus on other factors and also in, including um, uh, cost savings. And, and this, is, this is quotes from, directly from um, Edwin Pinero of MISO um, uh, during the launch of the ISO 50001 standard. So if we just move on to um, just comparison of uh, ISO 50001 and ISO 14000, what I've done here is just taken the, um, the clauses, I suppose the requirements of the two standards and, and compared them. I'm not going to go into the detail here, but you can see you have a lot of clauses that are, you know, are, are com what I would call common. Okay, the, the exact detail within them may not be the exact same, but, but there are common clauses around, you know, documents requirements, control of documents, uh, you know, you need to do operation control aspects, you know, management, um, commitment and representatives, things like that. And then, you know, and the M in the, uh, in the table here refers to management type aspects. So if you think of the standard has two different aspects, it's got technical aspects and it's got management system aspects. So a lot of the com all the common ones here are all management aspects. Then as we, uh, as we move into similar type aspects, you know, you have, um, or similar requirements. Again, you have a mixture of mainly management type um, aspects, and then you've got also the uh, some some technical ones here as well, where you've got you know objectives and targets. Okay, obviously they're going to be different for fifty thousand and one compared to fourteen thousand, um, and the review is is different. In fifty thousand and one, the review is 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 quite I suppose you know it's 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 fairly well prescribed in in that standard, and then the unique aspects. You know, in the unique aspects you have in 50,001, you've got a very detailed energy review, energy baselines, uh, identifying performance indicators, um, design aspects, and, and I'll talk about the, these different unique ones in, in, in a moment. Okay, so that's, that just gives you, a, you know, trying to put it in context of, of the similarities and, and then of, the, um, of the, just a few unique aspects that 50,001 covers. Just in terms of unique aspects, I mean, I'm not going to go into the detail of these bullet points here, but just to say that, you know, the general requirements do state that you, 
you know, that say that you, ha you should state how you will achieve continual improvement of your energy performance and of your energy management system. And, and this has been, uh, I think, one of the, uh, the, the big talking points during the week on, on the LinkedIn discussions is, you know, it, it is the effectiveness of the, uh, the energy management system. You know, if people use 50,001 framework and, and use it truly, then they will make significant energy savings, um, you know, through a continual improvement process. The other unique aspects are, are around the energy planning and the energy review, where you're required to analyze energy use and consumption, uh, and, 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 and have you know, past and present um, energy consumption identified, and also be looking at, at the future energy consumption and, and forecasting into the future. You need to determine your significant energy uses, so based on the analysis of your energy use, you need to look at your energy uses so that you can identify um, opportunities um, for improving energy performance that link to the significant energy uses so that you're so that you're focused and you're prioritizing all your efforts on on reducing um, the uh, of, of achieving your energy performance targets and, and reducing your energy consumption around these and significant energy uses energy performance indicators are a measure again of, of how you are, 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 are achieving your your, your, your goals and your targets. And energy performance indicators can be things like simple metrics, you know, such as monthly or energy annual consumption and comparison, you know, year on year or month on month, to um, simple ratios such as, you know, um, kilowatt hours per ton or per output of product, BTUs per ton, kilowatt hours per meter squared of the simple building. You know, that there is a, a case here to say use with caution because, you know, you know the, these, um, Maybe, maybe too simplistic um, for your particular um, for your particular industry or, or situation, and then you're right through to complex models where you've got re regression analysis of energy consumed against appropriate variables. Maybe degree days is, is an is an important variable for for your particular um, energy consumption, and you need to carry out a, a degree day analysis and a regression analysis based on that. Um, what this does, though, is, it's like you know it provides a you know, what I, what I, when I look at this, I think of maturity of systems. People have to start somewhere. So if you're starting out on the road of 50,001, you can start with simple metrics. And then as you improve your system, you can start to improve the, uh, the, the, the energy performance indicators that you're using as well. Another unique aspect is around the design. Um, you know, and, and the uh, ISO 14000 does not explicitly require that environmental considerations are taken into account in design. Whereas in 50,001, you must, you know, um, consider improvement opportunities, you know, in the design of, of new facilities and, and equipment um, and systems, etc. And also um, in the um, incorporate results of energy performance evaluations into the design as well. Procurement also is an important area for ISO 50001, where, you know, around procurement around energy services or products or, you know, um, our, our energy supply you need to be thinking about, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the impact of your procurement decisions on the um, energy performance within the organization. In terms of energy services, you know, you need to be thinking about the, the maintenance service and contracts that you have, the, the consultants, you know, uh, that you're using, the equipment and advice that you're getting. Is it all helping to achieve your, 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 your objectives and targets and, and drive and improve your energy performance? And the same with the products and, and equipment. That's probably more an obvious one for people, you know, that you're looking at um, energy efficient products. Um, you know, you're looking for uh, ratings or certifications from agencies. Um, and, and also to inform your suppliers that procurement is, is evaluated on the basis of energy performance so that, you know, you know that when you're sending out tenders that you have a, you know, a energy performance built into your, into your, into your tender requirements for, for new equipment. The organizational benefits then of, of integration the, is to reduce the administration time to pursue improvement opportunities, you know, so that, you know, if, if you're less time spent on administering and more time on, you know, chasing and carrying out improvement opportunities. And again, whether that's environmental opportunities or energy opportunities, better teamwork. So you, you've got a, a stronger team, you've got a combined team of 14,000 people, uh, environmental people and energy people, that team alone will, will provide great um, ideas and, 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 a, and a great resource. Use of existing you know, materials and resources and, and elimination of duplication across the, um, 
the management systems. You know, ease of finding information so that if, if it's one system that you're using, then you can find information easily. Uh, and better planning of management activities such as audits or meetings or actions, they can all be, um, you know, they can be combined uh, and, and uh, you know, instead of having separate meetings, you can have, you know, combined meetings. And just common methods as well for processing, um, you know, as opportunities, whether they're environmental or energy saving suggestions and actions. The cost of implementation of ISO 5001. This is this is um, just taken from um, you know a research done for the, uh, the the Superior Energy Performance Program, and it just shows you know that the uh, you know that, that the costs are typically around this like 67 percent for internal staff, um, and then you've got costs of, of of auditing. You have some costs for metering and 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 monitoring equipment, and and costs for external technical assistance. And you know, I'd probably ask Don as well maybe to comment on these on 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 these costs as well. Yeah, sure, Mike. In yeah. in, in discussing implementations with clients, specifically clients that have ISO fourteen thousand programs, uh, you know, thinking about either enhancing the existing energy aspects they may have, uh, and or taking the next step up uh, in in looking at ISO fifty thousand. Uh, level of continuous improvement. What what we're seeing is is that large, large multinational organizations have shared service uh, organizations, environmental health and safety groups. They'll have energy and facilities groups, and in these people in these groups, you know, tend to have uh, a little higher cost associated with their internal staff allocations, fairly consistent with with um, folks that are hiring consultants. You know, we're we're seeing some interesting data right now. Anywhere between forty and a hundred thousand uh, dollars for implementation uh, of of a full blown ISO fifty thousand program. Uh, if you uh, you know if you already have some type of continual improvement process in place, uh, if you don't, we're seeing you know numbers a little higher than that. Uh, but again, if you have an ISO fourteen thousand program. Then you've probably done about 50, 60 percent of the internal work already, uh, so you need to take advantage of that, not reinvent the wheel. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Don. And uh, yeah, I mean that, and that, and those costs have to be taken into context of you know of the overall payback and, and the the energy savings that are achieved and the size of the organization. And, and what I've done here is just said, look, you know, if if you can combine your resources with your fourteen thousand, you know, then is it possible that the overall cost can can shrink? Um, obviously, the uh, the percentages would also would also change as well. But the idea would be that. That 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 the cost of implementation should 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 be um should be should be lower, you know, if you already have those existing resources in place. What I'm going to do is just switch now to a a quick demonstration of um what I've described as was as is an integrated management system, you know, but it's a, it's it's a demonstration of our of our product and um. It really just a quick demonstration just to give you a flavour of of what can be achieved. Just logging in here. So what we have in, in what we have within our product, uh, the Enters, um, the Enters uh, ISO fifty thousand and one software, um, is, you know, when you log on to the system, you come into a you know a, a default dashboard, it, depending on your role within the organization and your your function. You know, you will you will maybe see different information and and different different type dashboards. For myself, I'm logging in as the energy manager here. I'm welcome, Mike, to the integrated management system for ABC Global. I can manage different sites if I need to, um, but we'll just leave it at ABC Company for for the moment. And then the, the the main screen that I see again, based on my my own um, my own preferences, I see my energy planning uh, information, my energy review information, where we have a basically a Sankey diagram, which is a, a, an automated Sankey diagram based on in, information input into the software, uh, whether it's through uh, manual entry or through integration with existing um, you know a metering and monitoring systems. But on the left-hand side, you've got your energy sources, which is maybe electricity or natural gas or oil, diesel. Um, and on the right, you've got your energy uses, which is 
you know, HVAC chiller, lighting, dispensary, boilers, dryer room, and, and transport. And you can also see, you know, in, in the red here, things are being highlighted. So, so we might have some discrepancies in our information on the oil and diesel. Um, there's some, some issues with our information here that we need to maybe analyze uh, further. And also, we're going to count it here so we can see that we have a maybe um, not that significant, but a significant enough portion unaccounted. So maybe we need to do a further analysis of our, of our, of our, our information, of our energy uses, whether they're um, not, uh, not realistic or are, are not accurate, or whether our energy bills and our energy sources are, are not accurate. But that that's just gives us a, a very quick overview, a very quick picture of, of where a snapshot of where we are. We can drill in and we can see you know, at our HVAC chiller two um, energy use. We can see it's, 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 it's consumption, electricity consumption. We can see the targets we've set for this is 345 megawatt hours. We can see um, we've got some improvement opportunities um, uh, already identified, which, which can give us a potential of 150 megawatt hours. We have no actions done yet. And um, we can drill right down and even see the list of, of improvement opportunities that are associated with this um, with, with, with this significant energy use. Okay, and we can also drill into the, into the detailed information as well if, if, we, if we need to. So that's the, that, that just gives a flavor of the, um, the linkage between um, our energy review, our energy sources, our energy uses, and right through to the identification of improvement opportunities. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just go around this dashboard in anti-clockwise uh, and go to rotate anti-clockwise. So down at the bottom left here, what I have here is, is, is an area for document management, and this shows me my, um, my last you know, issued documents, and also I can go in and see all of the documents in the system. So, so this, is a f this is a full document management module built into the, into the software, um, and you can see the different types of documents, different categories, you can sort by title, by owner, by issue date, um, we can even see when we click on the uh, the standard view, we can start sorting documents by different by different standards. So so the system allows you to cross reference and use the system as a, a, a as a um, a document management across the different standards, whether it's fifty thousand and one, or whether it's um, nine thousand or fourteen thousand, or, or even other standards such as you know such as LEED that's in here or SEMP, which is the shipping industry, and even old and obsolete documents can be viewed depending on your your profile on that. So, so it's a full document management system there. Moving across then, we've, we've got um, default re reports and charts. And um, here we can see our, our EMPI chart. So straight away we can see that, you know, how, how we're performing. Um, this, this, this chart relates to, to 2012, 2013. But we could see here from this chart, if I just show it in a, in a larger screen, we can see here that you know, okay, everything seems to be you know, it's it's kilowatt hours per unit of of output of product of some sort, and we can see that things are are you know are evenly matched from 2012 to 2013, and then we have um, you know just one here in August gone above our target, but both years are above our target, so we're saying well this must be um, we can analyze this further, but probably is um, an expected result based on the on on, on all in, in, within August. But then over here in October we have uh, some kind of a blip where there's a where there's a big difference between the two. So we need to investigate, and we have an action ready created to to investigate this 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 um, particular issue. Just just showing you say some more um, charts. I mean within the system you can have things like you know improvement opportunities by cost savings. You also have improvement opportunities by priority, and this is one of the um, the areas of 50,001 is where you're prioritizing your actions and um, based on different um, different criteria, whether it's you know the the, the cost savings or the um, the, the, the or in, in including the the payback or the um, impacts on you know on maintenance things like that. So th so this is built by those different um, criteria. And again, you have more um, uh, performance charts here and also action charts for managing the actions and who has overdue actions. Okay, then moving across, we've also got another um, area here, say, which can show um, our targets versus our actual savings. So we're, we're starting to detail our objectives and targets. And here we've listed our, our top um, energy uses. We've got our target number here is 345. Our actual savings so far are 218. And, um, and then down here we can also see these this information in, in more detail as well. 
and that's all really I want to show you on that. But again, here you have your two two areas where you can be monitoring your your, your energy performance um, through your EMPIs and through your um, your your, obje your objectives and targets and actual savings. Then moving up the uh, the right hand side here, you can see you've got an area for your tasks. So this is where we're getting into things that I have to do. So I've got say a number of improvement opportunities that I'm working on um, at different statuses. I've got six here are overdue, and some are at, so some are out for review, some are awaiting closure, and they've been carried out, and I've been asked to review them to see they're okay. And some are just drafts that I've been working on and, and haven't submitted yet into the system. And things like you know non-conformances, um, documents, audits. I'm working on different audits within the system. At, and they're at different stages and, and things like meetings. So these are all my tasks within this area. And when people log on, they will see you know they'll see their tasks listed here, which which drives um, which drives the continuous improvement. And then just up here is the system overview where we have um, you know the system management. Now I, as the energy manager or, or, or the, the system manager, can see this this particular area. So I can see all of my improvement opportunities. And that brings up a list of all my improvement opportunities, you know, by category, whether they're HVAC or lighting or motors or other electrical. Um, the summary, the um, the source and the uh, whether they're overdue or current, um, what status they're at, they're assigned, they're for review, they're waiting closure, the target dates, start dates and end dates. And then we've got you know area for non-conformances that have been raised say through um, through audits, and then we've got document management. So this is where documents are under review. So these are not issued documents; they're documents that have been that have been that have been either updated or they're new documents that have been submitted into the system, and they're there for people to review and to to um, to to issue and and authorize. And then also the audits. So in, within the audit system here, we have the ability to carry out audits um, scheduling. So you can schedule all of your audits within the system and, and you've got one, a one-stop shop basically for your, for your energy management audits or your quality management audits or you know, environmental management audits, health and safety audits. And this shows you um, the full schedule for, for the year and you can click into these and see the detail. And down in the bottom of this screen then as well we have the more detailed information about these audits. Um, you know, the location, the status, owners, things like that. So that's just, that's all I want to just go through with you just in terms of just a quick overview to show you how, how you could, you know, in, integrate um, the different um, systems in, in, into one system and have a, a complete overview of your 14,000, your 50,001, and, and even, even 9,000 and, and other standards as well. So let me just, let's just go back to my, um, just back to my slides, I have one more slide that I just wanted to mention as well around our, our, our product and, and it's, it's just because, you know, we, we're coming across all the time where people are just not sure, you know, where to start. And, and basically, you know, this concept of energy management maturity is very important in that, you know, people have to start somewhere and then they can work their way through different levels of maturity. And we're we're currently building the tools to help people to guide them through that. You know, so what we have is the requirements, and then the uh, of of the uh, of the standard are are of the um, fifty thousand and one energy management system, and then we bring you through. We can bring you through the levels, um, different actions that are need to be carried out at different levels, and what the status are of those actions? Are they overdue? Are they complete? And where are you along your path of, of improvement? And this is this is a very um, uh, exciting and, and, and unique area for us um, currently. Okay, so that's that's enough about our, our um, just about our product. But uh, what I wanted to get across was that this all this information can be integrated into into one, into one system. In terms of um, just pra some practical steps for integration, just want to go through um, you know to to give you some ideas of if if you are a fourteen thousand and one. Um, uh, a, a person within your organization and you're trying to think about what do I need to do to, um, to move to 50,001. Then, you know, so here are some steps that you need to be considering. You know, you need to look at your energy policy. You know, can, it, can the uh, 50,001 be combined, combined into the environmental policy? 
Um, maybe sometimes it's easier to keep separate. It, it's it's up to, it's up to yourself. Um, top management, you know, you you do need the, the commitment of top management um, um, for the fifty thousand and one, and you know, can, can 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 again, can that be combined? Can you combine management meetings with fourteen thousand? And if you do, just make sure that the individuals and the people responsible for fifty thousand and one are also um, are also included in, in, in those meetings. Can the management representative be the same person as the environmental coordinator or, or the um, energy management system representative? You know, you'd have to check workloads. Is is that feasible? Um, although there are potential efficiencies, you know, gained with having one addition, with one individual handling both standards. Is the energy manager a better fit? And then you have to consider consider the learning curve for the ISO standards if if unfamiliar. So training will be required. The energy review aspects that we spoke about earlier, you know, there's unique aspects. Um, you know, think you, you know, you re revert back to the brainstorming exercise that you would have done maybe to uh, identify the aspects and impacts under 14,001. You know, that may be a good starting point to do your energy review, and um, and then identify what already has been completed at the facility, and what can you build upon. You know, do you need to carry out a, a comprehensive energy audit? Maybe some energy, some basic energy audits have been carried out, but you may need a, a further, further detailed energy audit for certain aspects of, of the of the of the, um, the business. The energy baselines you probably have started, you know, had made a good start, and you have some some energy uses tracked, um, but you just need to uh, to review that as well and see is that is that information strong enough and is it been tracked well enough um, and just document it as as you as you do it. Just, just talking about um, uh, performance indicators. You know, have you already identified energy performance indicators? You know, t typically you pr probably may not have very strong energy performance indicators as part of your fourteen thousand and one. You know, so you need to think about you know what is your cons consumption per per widget or per per unit of product um, produced. Um, consider intensity based metrics. Um, you know. So, you know, absolute base, absolute based metrics. You know, like the um, the annual consumption or the monthly consumption year on year, may be just harder to um, to, to use because they're 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 within your organisation. They're just not, they don't really um, provide enough benefit because of production level changes or um, changes in in even changes in temperature and and um, weather patterns. Especially if you're a you're a high um, you know, a high, a high uh, energy-using um, industry that uses high, uh, high heat loads or, or refrigeration um, processes, um, and then you know, um, just moving on to the next step. So, implementation side, you know, think about performing a gap analysis, um, review, understand the differences between the standards, and there are lots of good um, guides uh, available that help you to understand the differences. Um, and then identify the gaps between the current practice and what, what the standard prescribes and develop an implementation plan based on the findings from that gap analysis. And your implementation plan probably will be around, you know, things like, you know, you need to decide the team, um, additional members such as energy manager, procurement, purchasing manager, facilities manager. So you need to involve all of, of these people to have a very uh, strong uh, energy management team you know, combined procedures, you know, where you have procedures that just need tweaking, then just tweak them for 50,001. Um, you probably will need to write some new procedures around design procurement, um, uh, how you carry out energy reviews, how you identify your energy baselines, um, and then carry out those energy um, reviews and, and set EMPIs. You'll also need to look at starting awareness training, you know, and um, exposing staff to the, uh, to the new uh, energy management system. Uh, I, you know, I, I, it's also ideal to 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 roll out and live with the system for a few few months before internal audits. But you need to start thinking about setting internal audit schedules and and and, and identifying findings and and also addressing those findings, and, and also pursue external certification if desired. You know, and, and you know th that is the validation and the proof that you are doing all the right things. You know, so. So certification, you know, once you once you're in a good shape, certification is probably is the next logical step. Um, so that's 
Don, sorry, just Don, I'm not sure if you want to make some comments on those implementation steps. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Mike. Appreciate that. Um, what, what we're typically finding for ISO 14001 uh, it, programs are that the, the, some of these best practices that Mike has, has done a good job of, uh, of identifying aren't included in, in developing. Uh, many organizations uh, will list energy as an aspect. Uh, they may not list it as a significant aspect within their 14,000 program, but I, I would challenge anyone listening today that um, any environmental aspect that you could pick, I can find an energy angle on it. And so you need to really think through how energy is flowing through your organization. And that really gets to Mike's point that, uh, that, that he made here in that, you know, there is a very strong correlation between you know, your energy consumption and how your production processes uh, operate. So uh, take a look at, you know, those carefully and uh, certainly, uh, you know, consider the best aspects of, of ISO 50001 uh, within your existing 14,000 program. Um, and then one last comment I have is, is that people that do, in fact, identify energy as an aspect, uh, what we're seeing out in the field is that uh, many people are not normalizing data correctly, uh, and that is a, a significant weakness uh, in the program. And why that's important is is that you're, in effect, inaccurately, you know, communicating data to your management team, and perhaps even strategy and decisions are being made and being made on investments, uh, and you're actually making incorrect decisions. So those those are some of the important takeaways. Uh, for 14,000 program people to consider. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Okay, thanks, John. Thanks for those um, very, very valid points and uh, based on your own, your, your experiences. Um, okay, look, we have, I mentioned a poll, we're going to skip the poll. Um, I probably you know, try to uh, pass along too much information in this webinar, but I hope it all um, it, it was all okay and, and came across okay. Just just to quickly just you know I suppose I, in in one sense just want to you know get across again that you know this this comparison of the two standards not a common not a commonality between them and um, some unique aspects. Just want to you know again I suppose to be honest um, plug that we do cover all of these um, these aspects. And maybe some in the future as well, if 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 there is a need, and just to say, you know, even one example of a customer here is is Harbic Plastics, who has who has achieved platinum level in the superior energy performance, and they are using now our, our software as a truly integrated system for the fourteen thousand and for their quality system as well. Just also just to say, you know, just think about, you know, I've said here how energy reduces internal staff time, but you can also think about just even integrating your systems. You know, you quickly embed ISO 50001 way of working. It helps manage more project sites and, and people simultaneously. Reduce manual task time. Eliminate spreadsheets. And um, and I think we all love spreadsheets, but it, it just can can eat up people's time. Uh, work anywhere because it's web based. Increase accountability. Um, and you've seen some of those charts where you know you've got um, actions that need to be followed up, maybe overdue actions. You know how do you f make make sure that things are are carried out in a timely fashion? Improve accuracy. You know, and that's that's a point that Don made there about you know normalization of data and having proper data to hand, and um, share learning and engage stakeholders. So with systems like these, you can have stakeholders also uh, accessing and and being being shown the correct information depending on their their level. Um, how Enert, I, mean, I suppose in terms of, of, of auditing, you know, um, Enert ha does help to reduce auditors' times because the increased efficiency of the overall audit process uh, on an off-site, and you've seen the, the comprehensive schedule, um, standardized platform approach, clear evidence and records, integration ability with other ISO standards, reduced reoccurrence of non-conformities, and insightful, um, insightful information leading to continuous improvement. So, um, nearly out of time so um, we will have time now for some questions and I think Leone has um, he will, will, will read out some of the questions that we've achieved obviously we will not be able to, uh, to go through all but we will follow up with everybody afterwards and please please feel free to email myself or Don as well with, um, with, with questions absolutely Mike and um, just to remind all attendees as well 
once you leave the webinar, a survey will pop up on the screen. Be sure to enter that survey because you, you do have the opportunity to win um, a free uh, monthly subscription to ISO 50001 Manager Pro software. Um, great questions coming in. It's a shame we can't get to more of them, uh, Mike and Don. Just one here that I know, um, Mike, that you may be an able to answer and give a succinct answer to quickly. Does the company have to be 14001 certified to start with or can they go straight to 50001? Oh no! A company goes straight to fifty thousand and one. Uh, that's that's the straight straight answer. Okay, okay. super. Um, another question here. Somebody just I think Mike perhaps earlier in the presentation you referred to energy actors. Someone someone just looking for you to define exactly what is an energy actor. What do you mean by energy actors? Well, I, I think it's anybody who who, who has a, who has an impact on, on energy uh, within the organisation. You know, and I think one of the lists I had there was you know the the purchasing manager, the the environmental manager, the operations manager, everybody like that has an impact on, on the on the energy performance. They all should be considered um, when reviewing and um, and putting uh, uh, plans in place. Super, super. A question, Don, I might direct towards you, and I, I think this question was probably asked before you got, uh, you, yourself and Mike discussed the cost-benefit side, but I'll, I'll go ahead anyway. Um, so far, energy savings have been discussed. However, what about the investment necessary to implement those energy efficiency initiatives? If they are considered into the equation, what is the average internal rate of return of the ISO 50001 implementations? Now I know, Don. We've we've been told by the DOE, um, the average payback is within 1.7 years. You might be able to take that on a little bit further for us. Sure, sure. The you know the, the, the kind of paybacks we're seeing range anywhere from, on average, six to 17 uh, percent. We we are starting to actually see some more large scale implementations come in in the 18 to 25 percent. But on average, you know, those are the kinds of returns that we're seeing. Uh, and, and, and they span quite a number of different sectors, sizes of organizations, levels of implementation. And uh, so you're marrying up both the you know, project improvement opportunities as well as the behavioral. Super, super. Th thanks for that, Don. Um, another question just uh, based again on the U.S. market. So I guess you're, you're best placed, Don, to address this. What industries are you seeing um, experiencing the highest degree of take-up of ISO 50001 certification? Right now, right now we're actually seeing a, a fairly equal uh, breadth of, of industries, but I will say with the recent announcement from Chrysler that they're going to be adopting this across the board, via the fiat group uh, so we're all of a sudden seeing a lot of activity in the automotive supply chain and this is reminiscent of ISO 14001 and how it started off as well uh, but what's most unique and, and personally I guess disappointing to me is is that it's 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 Asian and uh, European multinationals that are leading the way not my uh, homegrown American companies so uh, you know we need to step up to the plate in America thank you Okay, thanks for that, Don. One for you here, Mike. How does Enerit connect with monitoring and targeting software? If I could get you to keep that short at all, that'd be great. I suppose through 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 various um, through various techniques, um, Enerit is a it's, it's a web based a web based software, so it can be connected through um, standard protocols, um, web services, um, FTP. It just depends on the, uh, the 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 tool that you're trying to connect to, and there's ma many different ways of doing it. The standard standard ways of doing it. Super. Um, ju just on a housekeeping note as well, a lot of people here are asking the team whether slides and recordings will be available. Yes is the answer. They will be um, emailed out to everybody within 24 hours of the end of the webinar. Um, another question here, Mike, um, what are the basic hardware slash facility requirements for Im implementation of your system? Oh, for, for the Android software, it's mm. purely uh, web, just web browsers. Okay. There's no uh, additional requirements. You know, it, it, it is a a, a cl cloud-based system, um, pay-as-you-go model, and all that's needed to access it is a, is, is a web browser. 
Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, well, we might just leave it there. We're, we're going to finish on time as promised. Again, I would encourage everybody, please uh, fill out that survey. We'd absolutely love to give away that prize um, and we will inform the winner tomorrow. Um, so uh, hopefully you all benefited and enjoyed the webinar today. Um, a thanks to Mike and, of course, to Don uh, for presenting and offering their time to to come and educate us all on this topic. Um, if you have any questions, comments or feedback, we would love to hear it. Please don't hesitate to email Mike, Don or myself. Um, and um, do stay in touch and um, we, we will let you know about any upcoming webinars we have. Thanks again and have a great rest of the day. Great. Thanks, Leonie. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Thanks, Don.